Wichita State, they shot really good from the floor. If you just look at their raw percentage number, they shot 64.9% from the field, 24 of 37. And that was a big reason why they were able to build up their eight-point lead early on in the first half. And even defensively, they were giving Houston problems. Now, the biggest issue for the Shockers was the turnovers. They had 20 turnovers overall in the game, and they – even though 24 of 37 is really good percentage-wise, 37 shots compared to Houston's 57 shots. Houston Cougars shot 20 more shots than the Shockers. And, I mean, that's really the difference maker. And they were also battling foul trouble throughout the game. It was a strange game. I mean, when the Shockers did not turn the ball over, they had a lot of layups. They made 11 layups and had two dunks. But when the Cougars got pressure on them, played the passing lanes, Cougars had, I think, 14 steals in the game. So... It was like if the Shockers did not get a layup, <laughs> the, Cougs, the Cougs stole the ball. <laughs> so it was one of those things. But Jamal Shedd had a big game, career high for him. Shedd Sasser took over for the Cougs in the second half, mm-hmm. and the Cougs pulled away for the 17-point win. Yeah, most of the game in the first half, Wichita State just did a great job of moving a basketball, making an extra pass, and penetrating on those um, – why, as the defense rotates to get a, a good layup or a good look at three, then oftentimes their guards just made tough step back threes, which were contested. And 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 I, I don't know I've said this before. That's the way that you can beat Houston if you make those type of plays consistently, and if you shoot as efficient as they shot. But you just have to be able to stop Houston at the same time. And so. For the most part, um, Wichita State just did a good job of moving the basketball, making Houston defend for a longer period of time. And like you both of y'all said, Jamal and Marcus took over in the second half. And the Cougs stayed in the game in the first half, despite poor shooting from the floor, 13 for 13 from the foul line. I wish I could remember the fan who come in on the Cougs. Free throw. Do they practice free throws? Well, <laughs> they're making them now. <laughs> So 13 for 13, they made the first 16 free throws in the game. 20 for 22 for the entire game. The Cougs going 20 for 22 from the line. How un like But that was part of the win, winning by 17 points. Once again, they're finding different ways to get dubs. That's all that matters. And Jamal Shedd um, sparked the um, run that I don't want to call it a run, but he sparked the team that I should say in the first half to keep them in the game. And and that's really what we've seen from him, his ability and IQ to recognize when the team needs him to score. And he does a great job of doing that and being aggressive to do that, whether the shot falls or not. And then that kind of got the team going, kept them in the game, and then they were able to keep it going in the second half. We're live, pal. Uh, real, real quickly in a second. Um, but no, day on to your point, um, in regards to Jamal Shedd, he was certainly an underrated aspect to this game, set a new career high with 25 points. But I think kind of an underrated part to Houston, particularly in the comeback in the second half, was Jarris Walker. And really, he, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was in the first three minutes of that second half when he had – three offensive rebounds and it was pivotal in, in the two, three zone that Wichita state was playing in that it, it gave Houston fits, but those offensive rebounds really allowed to kind of get Houston some rhythm. And then Jamal Shedd and Marcus Sasser, like you guys alluded to just caught fire. It was good to see Jarris crash the boards, you know, not, you know, him not being a senior, he didn't start. Reggie Cheney and Darius Bowser started along with Marcus for, the, for tonight's game. So Jarris, I think a lot of guys were just out of rhythm early in the first half, and it took Jarris a while, but he had four offensive rebounds, five on defensive end. He he was a spark defensively. He battled some foul trouble, but he did – he made winning plays. He impacted winning, and that's one thing that Coach Sampson has harped on a lot this season, and we've said a lot during these Les Raid Cougs shows, Jarris impacted winning. Yeah, he did a good job of crashing the boards. Like you're saying, I think not only did they get the team going, they got him going, and he's able to hunt down his shot and make a couple of good moves offensively. And, and it just made me think about watching the game. I think on any given night, especially going forward, you know that you're going to get production from Marcus, particularly offensively. So it's about which other two players on any given night is going to step up and produce him in any given game because there's been times when it's been Jairus, been times when, like tonight, it's been Jamal. 
or it's been Tremont or it's been Emmanuel off the bench or it's been different players. But I think that's something to keep an eye on. But it, it plays to Houston's benefit because they have the depth and they have the different players to, to um, be their second or third player or potentially even first player as far as um, offensive production goes in any given game. Now, when it comes to the story of this game, senior night, Chris, like you alluded to, the well, I guess technically Houston's played 30 games. The second different, the third different starting lineup when it doesn't account for Marcus Asset, Tremont Mark, Jamal Shedd, uh, Jarris Walker, and Jawan Roberts, it was because of Darius Bowser and Reggie Cheney who were inserted too. Do you guys, what you obviously, Darius Bowser hasn't had a lot of run with the program, but obviously a good homage should be able to get all the seniors in there. And it, it was a bit of an interesting start to the game. I think that really had a lot to do with the kind of weird feel that that was to the game. I don't think that lineup was used to playing on the floor together. Oh, well, I mean, with Darius in the starting lineup, he's not a scorer, you know, and just real quick in case anybody wonder what happened to Andy, he's going to take a picture with his fans. <laughs> so that's what he's doing. So it's going to be me and Dan for a few minutes. But Darius is a rebounder. He's a physical defender. That's his role on this team. So him being in the starting lineup, he's not a scorer. He's, he's, he's you know, so Wichita State didn't have to guard him. So that was a factor early on for the Cougs. The offense was different. You know, basically you just had Tremont, Marcus, and Jamal, and then Reggie set picks and Darius set picks. And the Shockers are like, okay, well, you know, these two guys aren't going to do anything <laughs> to beat us. So let's just defend Tremont, Jamal, and Marcus a little bit differently with some double team, the traps, things of that sort. So it took the Cougs a while offensively, and their defense took a nap. I don't know if it was the 6 o'clock start, but they just were a step slow, and Wichita State got confident, started making tougher shots. But at halftime, I asked Jamal, said this after the game, during the encore celebrations, and Jamal said that Jamal Mark at halftime told his teammates that he took ownership for the – lackluster defense in the first half you know he was guarding Craig Porter Jr. a lot and he said my 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 bad guys my man got hot and that's on me and you saw Jamal was much more aggressive in the second half and the team was much more aggressive in the second half defensively so it's good for that ownership that the players have ownership when their defense is not up to Cougar standards so Coach Sam did not say much at halftime guys we got to do better and teammates did their part and much better defensively in the second half yeah, Coach Simpson always talk about how this program is a player-led team. That's a good example of him taking ownership. But I just think it was a, a good offensive player making shots. Uh, but I can see where he's taking ownership and saying, my man got hot, that's on me. But it wasn't as if um, he wasn't playing good defense because all, all of those shots were contested, tough shots. That if you can make that consistently, you just clap your hands go down the floor. But that's that's a great, great point right there because this this team and this program is a, a selfless program, and they hold each other accountable. And so not surprised to, to hear him take ownership. This kind of challenged himself and challenged the team to kind of step it up more on the defensive end. But um, um, defensively, I think to start the game, it, it was just out of source. Offensively and defensively, I think we um, Bowser are in the game. But um, once they kind of got their normal lineup in, J1 and got in, had a huge uh, instant impact with an offensive rebound um, and his activity around the rim. And so I think early on it was just, just a, a lack of rhythm um, from, like you said, Andy, and not being, being playing much with that lineup. I was going to say to add on to your point, Chris about Tramon Mark and uh, or what the story Jamal Shed had told you about Tramon Mark and taking the responsibility about the defense. You know, Dan, you hit it right on the head. A lot of the shots that the Shockers just hit in the first half, especially Craig Porter. I mean, they were tough contested shots that I mean, you just got to congratulate on being able to hit those shots in particular. But I think, and specifically, Dan, like you said about the selflessness about this team, uh, that's something that's going to be kind of a theme with not just this team overall, but the seniors specifically, that's going to be something that we get into because, of course, it was the senior night. Now, in regards to Houston and the switch that they were able to do in the second half, from the first half to the second half, I think the biggest thing, it just seemed like Houston, I don't know, for whatever reason, the festivities of senior night, like we mentioned, a, a different starting lineup, kind of wonky, but I think overall, it seemed like Houston was swarming much more. Were, it seemed like they were playing with much more speed, or at least from my perspective, it looked like they were being able to get more steals, hit balls, and that ignited a lot of fast-break transition opportunities that Houston were able to capitalize 
that was a big change from the first half in the second half. They, they were more aggressive. I mean, the reason the Cougs stayed in the game in the first half was because they're aggressive and got to the foul line and made free throws. You know, they they uh, took advantage of the steals that they forced on the Shockers. Once they got into the Shockers and played passing lanes and and got really more used to playing Cougar defense up to Kelvin St- Sampson standards, the Shockers struggled. You know, t- turnovers started coming up. The Cougs struggled to make shots in the first half. Second half, they made those shots, and that's what helped them increase the lead and then pull away down the stretch when Jamal and Marcus just took over. Yeah, and I, I think um, in that first half, in which it, that's what teams, I think, should do against Houston is move the basketball and force Houston to rotate because you know they're going to rotate and help the helper on, on um, every possession. Mm-hmm. So that's what they did, and that's how they got good shots. In the second, well, also in the first half and the second half, the counter of that is it, it creates more opportunities for steals for Houston to get tip passes, like you mentioned, and get those steals. So it's kind of uh, – um, Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Move the ball, you can get open shots. But if you do it in Houston, <clears throat> aggressive nature, and is able to get some of those tips and steals, enables them to get out in transition and um, cause turnovers and get out in the open four, like you mentioned. But um, I think just credit to Wichita State because I think they had a good game plan going in. And um, I see the comment, why didn't this one right here just put it on the screen? As with four or five, as Craig Porter came back in the game around ten minutes left, why not go right at him? I don't think you 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 change the flow of the game with with what got you the lead. You continue run your normal offense and will help you build the lead. And then in the midst of that, if, if you find a matchup, then you could attack him. Then you would attack him. I don't think you you change the offense. Let's just attack him and try to get him out the game. But he did have an instant impact. I think the lead got up to 13. He came back in. They got at least down to like six or something like that. He had a good game. 